thought straight into my head, like cell shading. Well, Unreal can do that. And then it, there, there it was like, Hey everybody, the process is back. And in this episode, we're speaking with Martin Bell, an independent filmmaker, screenwriter, previous supervisor about his process on making a short film on his own inside Unreal Engine 4. Got a proper clapper here. <laughs> Hi, my name is Martin Bell. I'm a previous artist and supervisor. Um, and I'm also a writer, director, and my new film, Praising Bit Ridge, is out now. When we spoke last, was it the was it just a trailer? Yeah, that you'd made. Yeah. So last time it, it it was just a trailer, but I did have to fall the previous edit. I think I showed it to you actually. It was clearly a good film in there, and um, but it would take so long. All the characters were meant to be temporary. They were just meant to be previous characters. The idea was to replace everything, or at least, um, even if we kept them on the same skeletons, that the, the, there'd be a whole new character that would occupy each skeleton. So I, what happened was I was watching Netflix, maybe I think Netflix, and there's a and, and trailer for that film for the Richard Linklater's new one, Apollo Ten and a Half, which is I'm not sure if it's cel shaded CG or if it's rotoscoped live action, but either way, it's, it's in that same vein of his other work, that, like Waking Life and stuff. But the thought straight into my head, like cell shading, and and it just went well, and I, the thought went well, Unreal can do that, and then it, there, there it was, like actually. All the problems I've got with not having decent looking assets would all be solved if everything was cell shaded. Because... I was going to say it changed, didn't it? From from when we spoke and you were yeah. starting it, it's the the visual side of it has changed. Yeah, it had to because everything looks so different. They're nothing hung together, mm. and a lot of the a lot of the assets weren't. Some of them were like photo real with full nice PBR yeah. materials, and some of them weren't. Um, and it thought it didn't matter if everything's got cell shaded material on it. It doesn't matter. Like yeah. you know, it's fine. It's, it's like a great equalizer. Like it's going to make that truck cost two dollars it was always meant to be a placeholder there's going to be a hyper real truck in there and all this nope doesn't matter anymore yeah. stick a shell stick yeah. a cell shader on it it's done so it'll be it'll be really interesting now martin to just i guess get into your process but what's the main steps that you've used to create this um final short absolutely so my first step is always to get in a mocap suit and record a version or multiple versions maybe of the kind of action i'm thinking of and for each character. And so what I will do is um, I'll bring that into uh, Unreal, uh, into the level. Um, did you did you storyboard this or did you get straight no. into? Well, what, I what did was to the... a degree. So my process now is different to like when I was kind of originally exploring Unreal and, and the whole workflow. I don't need to shot list. Yeah. Um, because I, it's in my it's in your head, you can head edit and it, and as long as you know, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. I, if I was trying to work with somebody else, I would have to shot list and maybe do some storyboard. But it's mm -hmm. just me, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Um, I, I know exactly what I'm going to do in the mocap suit, and I know exactly how I'm going to shoot it. I've already shot it in my head. I just mm -hmm. need to get the get if I can get the action from the mocap into Unreal, then I can shoot it in Unreal. My mocap suit is really old, it's it's done me really well. It owes me, I think, it cost me like 500 pounds on a Kickstarter in, in, in 2015, and that's it doesn't owe me any money at perception all. Neuron. Yeah, perception, the original perception neuron one. Yeah, and they're super proud that I'm still using the Brilliant. <laughs> the original gear. Like I'm making a making a point of saying like this is this you know this is not even the best stuff you can get. This is the, the really early version. So what I used to do is I would get the mocap and I would I'd chuck it straight into Maya and get and then I've got an animatable. Uh, you get it on the rig in, in in Maya. So I've got an animatable character because I'm thinking like an animator all the time. Mm -hmm. I've got an animatable character with the thing on, and what I might need to do is fix some like some knees that have come in, you know, put it the wrong way and things like that. But now I don't even bother. I don't even bother. I check it raw, wholesale, as it was recorded, warts and all, straight into Unreal. Get it in, get it on the characters and start blocking out the sequence. When when that's sort of working, when I can kind of see it, I will then get those shots and I'll render, render them out properly, especially with the amount of effects that are in Praising Ridge. I mean, every single shot in Praising Ridge pretty much has got countless effects mm. between the rain the explosions and the gas and all that stuff like there's effects everywhere and they all get triggered there's a trigger point in unreal so i get all those rendered out and, I, and i'll rebuild that edit in 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 premiere and then i'll let it sit there like I, like because when i go to actually do some animation i, I want to be absolutely sure that i'm not wasting my time <laughs> uh, 
just to show the evolution of this, uh, if you can show any comparisons as well, Martin, from the first pass that you had. I'll show the first version of the film and you'll see uh, what it looked like before. And, and it's, it's the same model. I just pushed the shapes around on, in, in, in Mudbox. This is the shot where Mr. Preedy uh, is telling the lads, you know, get your gas masks on and all that. Okay. So let's see. So this is version one. Effectively the same shot, right? But the yeah. camera's static. This guy's in a way. But this is this is like a typical, you know, you block the shot. Yeah, so I block this out. So in fact, if we go, if we go around here, uh, there's no rain uh, because uh, I, didn't have, I didn't have rain in the film at the time. Uh, you can see here, uh, this is built from um, no dedicated mocap for this. It's uh, it's mixed mo clips that are blended together. Um, but yeah, you can see that these lads are actually World War II soldiers. It's a stock Mixmo character uh, in this version. Uh, this guy um, is uh, is also a Mixmo character. He's from Fuse. He's got a policeman's hat on and a leather jacket and jeans. Obviously, not dressed like a commanding officer from World War One. Yeah, so that's that's an early, an early version. Um, and then when you see how it's floating all over at the bottom, doesn't matter because I'm only interested. In so I show you now how. The film looked then. But it needed this first pass to, you know, figure out like like what it, what it is that's that's going on. Um uh so yeah, and then but this we're gonna get to the shot we just saw here now. Um this is this one. Uh and I replaced that with mocap then in the end. And then so the three stages there were do do it with um, do it with mixed mo clips, then replace it with mocap, and then um, finally export the mocap that I'm using into one into Maya, fix it all up, and add facial animation. Facial animation, uh, I used a thing called mocap X. Um, uh, using mocap X would record me doing the lines, and you get a video, and you get a, a, a mocap X file, and I would take the video, put it into After Effects get the frames out uh, and put them into Maya so that I can line everything up with the with the mocap data and move it to where it needs to be and 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 animate it and then animate it properly. And I got really good at it. I could do a shot in an hour from start. So if I could record the I was doing it before work. I could do do an hour before work. So record the mocap on the phone and an hour later I've got the finished facial animation. You can't make a 10 minute film on your own and not have ways of cutting corners like you just need to yeah, be able to of cut course corners. yeah um, i mean that's that's the, the great thing about the background that you know you know you've got to think on your feet you've got to make things do you've got to kick bash things this is the whole this is what's fascinating about this is is the process of this the other thing that got complicated was because they were mixed mo characters the years old um i generated them the mixed used to have a script i mean what adobe have done to mix is criminal they were already there like, all these things like meta humans and Adobe were already there when they bought Mixmo. Mixmo was doing that years and years ago. They were well ahead of the game. After a couple of months in 2020, they turned off the ability to send a, mute, a Fuse character to Mixmo to be rigged. And and the, the, but they say, oh, you can rig any character, just upload the OBJ. Not true. You can do that, but it doesn't come with facial animation. The other, the other ones did. It had it built in and it would come in with an FBX that had facial blend shapes and all that stuff. And then they had a script you could run that would rig it for you. And I've still got the script and it still works. But you need a character that's come out of um, this kind of Mixmo. Little Scottish lad in the van, John Clifford, the battery commander, was Commissioner Gordon from my fan Batgirl fan film I wanted to make. That's how those characters end up. End up there. That's why they look like they do because they're just like they're just what I made years ago, and that they were still lying around, and they could be rigged with 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 face shapes. When I first made the version of the film, Maya 2018, I could export from the Mixmo um, exporter tool with facial blend shapes. The problem with 2018 was because the rigs were so old, the feet would never stay planted. The controls would, but the feet were dancing around all the time. 2014 didn't, didn't do it. So I had to export body animation from 2014 oh my and facial animation from 2018. But then 2018 had stopped. The export urge didn't work at all. Mocap X didn't work in 2014. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to do my animation in 2018 and I'm recording my head animation as I'm doing the lines, right? And I want that in. This is, this is not an ideal situation, obviously. Like, I'm not I'm not suggesting this is how you make a film. Yeah. I'm suggesting this is what I inherited. 
you know, this is your process. You know, a lot of people just go, oh yeah, I just recorded some facial capture and we put it onto the rigs and it worked great. We want to know the, the bad times, the tough times, the, the crazy process. I had to do this, 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 just to get this. This is really good because this is real, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so here's how it works with the, the effects, right? So I control them all inside each shot. So they're off by default and I turn them on in the shots, right? So it would look like this by default. Mm -hmm. so that's the, okay, um, yeah. the old look. You turn on the cell shader and we turn on the Kuohara filter, we get that. Nice. If I turn off cell shading, you see how... Oh, okay, it, yeah. Is that a paid thing? Is it a something from the marketplace? There's a tutorial, some some guy I found, uh, I was just looking for like a painting effect. And the idea was I was not going to use it on everything, it was going to be just for backgrounds. But actually when I turn the Kuohara filter on, you run a camera over it and it's almost like the, the paint is baked onto the geometry, like mm. it's really nice. So, uh, so when you add the Kuohara filter on, what happens to the rain? So it does it to the frame or to the does it to everything? Does it to everything? So that's all good. However, if I want to put the lines on, this is what comes out of Unreal. So the first thing I would do obviously is go to Effect and uh, Channel and Invert to get it onto white with black lines on a white background, and then I'll go to Multiply and then we get lines. Um, but I wasn't quite happy with it. I wanted it to feel a bit more organic. So pre-compose the lines and call it lines and open this. And I would duplicate it at the top one to 60, create a new solid. So now you see with the lines, this is basically so the black solid with the 60% lines on top. And then in here I go apply animation preset and apply this cell grain, which is an animated cell grain, horrible to look at now. But if we then right click this and go blend mode stencil luma, it eats, it's eaten away the bottom lines, gives you that texture to it. Um, just to give it a bit more of an and made sort of feel and something that's just a bit less computer graphic y. Anything that was out of focus, the characters are out of focus. I didn't give them lines, and that made it complicated then. The the lines there start off out of focus. Yeah. Nice. And then I bring them into focus by here, you know. So it's there's a few shots like that where it's just bringing the things into focus. Is there anything that you would have sort of done differently, or what's the main thing that you've learned from the process of making a short film on your own uh, in Unreal Engine? I'd just be like, I want to have a really nice skeleton that I can animate in in, in Maya, and I want I want as many characters as possible to share that skeleton in Unreal, so that like you know share animations, especially for previews, that's really important. What I should have done really is like picked something that I didn't feel needed to be told. It was just a, an exercise in doing stuff, just an exercise in making a, a making something, getting it out of the, uh, the engine, figuring out these processes and everything. Um, but me being me, I had to plump for a story that I really, really wanted to tell. Just the complexity of that, sim what seemed like a simple story, just kept making it get bigger and and, and more complicated. Uh, and the other things were like, I never knew how I was going to do the rugby crowd. I just knew that I had to find a way. When I came back to do it, sure enough, someone has made a stadium <laughs> filled, a, a, a stadium filler of, of fans. And it, that was another reason why the QR filter really saved me because because they're in modern clothes. I would have loved well, you to can get have, away to, with them in the background with a filter. But they're in the background with the QR filter, and you can't. They're just moving. That like, yeah, it's fine. Like, absolutely, it's, it's fine. And so that that's where you can. Um, I guess one thing of advice is if oh, I wonder what they've uploaded, and when you get the opportunity to that, they're releasing a free pack of stuff that you're constantly shopping. Yeah, constantly shopping. Always make sure that you go into the get the free content every you might not think you want it right you but... never know so uh, advice wise for um you mentioned earlier martin about sort of keeping it simple don't let it get don't let it grow too much if you try and contain it to something especially if you're a first time filmmaker yeah. creating something simple. you would say simplicity and so it's a simple idea well told mm. uh, and the other advice if you're making if you're, i think this, i see this in in people's work all the time and they've got a beautiful set from from That's the marketplace. It. I completely and agree. Just, just long camera. cameras, just just doing absolutely nothing. Get rid of it. You don't need it. You can get away with it once as an establisher. Amazing. Is, is there any other uh, quick fire advice for other filmmakers? I know we mentioned a few, but is there any other ones that you can think of that would be beneficial for people starting in Unreal Engine? Here's, here's one. If you are coming from Maya and you go into Unreal Engine. Don't be tempted to just use it as a renderer, a big part of what makes it unique. It is so much faster to lay out your sequences in Unreal, so much, so much faster. It, it's almost bigger. And I've been using Maya for 50, nearly 20 years. Your first hour in Unreal Engine tutorial on learn.unrealengine.com 
and then do uh, your first hour in sequencer and you can make shots after that. Like it takes two hours, like you, you're away, it's done. I guess I, I guess the thing to remember is to, to know your lane. If you're not an animator, find one, budget yeah. one, you're gonna need, if you're gonna need someone who can animate um, and you're gonna need a mocap suit. And if you can't animate, you're probably gonna wanna get a better mocap suit than if you can, because if you can yeah. animate, like me, I'm quite happy with the with the old the old one because I'm gonna I'm gonna change it anyway. I'm gonna open it up and change it anyway. So uh, it doesn't make it doesn't make any difference if bits of it don't work. It's it's fine. But and, and I and I like animating hands. Uh, I was out for, so you know if I, I don't even bother wearing. I've got gloves. I don't even bother wearing them. Um, I just because I'll just I'll just animate. It's just, it's just superfluous data that I don't need. I'll just animate them anyway. Yeah. But if you're not an animator, you're gonna want that stuff. And the other thing to remember is when you're doing facial. Um, capture um, it still to this day. I mean, this is you know August. I I haven't really seen many examples of it working just out of the box. Like it needs an animator to go over it. Okay, amazing, Martin. Is there anything like what you're working on at the minute to sign to sign off on? What you plans for the future in terms of like filmmaking, Unreal Engine? So yeah, interestingly enough, um, while I was obsessed with this, I was also obsessed with. Uh, writing uh, this true crime drama that I wanted to do. Um, and uh, I wrote it and it got it, it got eights on the blacklist, which is which is really prestigious. I got read recommended on a blacklist. It's a good script. Um, and my script editor told me, uh, you'll never make that. No one will ever buy it. No chance. And I was like, why? It's like first time writer. You can't it's just you can't do an eight part limited true crime drama that's say in sixties and 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 expect people to make it. They're never going to make it. You've got to be like Russell T. Davis or, you know, Jack Horn uh, for people to trust you with an eight part bloody period drama. Like, it's just not going to happen. She's, the only way you're going to ever make that is to get a career like Russell T. Davis as a writer, which will take 20 years, and then push for it. And, and, and maybe then somebody will give it to you. But until then, it's just not going to happen. And then against all odds, it got optioned by this like new production company. And I thought, ah, this will learn you. Ah, yeah. an option now. Uh, and then they took it to the BBC and ITV and Channel 4 and Channel 5 and a bunch of others. And they all said, nope. <laughs> it's like, and they all said no for the same reason. Uh, they can say what well, it, it, it because it's a first time writer, it's too big, it was too expensive, it's too weird, and it is weird. So what I've learned from Praiseberg Ridge is I need to distill it down so it's achievable just by me. I don't have yeah. to worry about anybody else. I can just mm -hmm. do it with me. So it started off as a TV drama, but I'm actually going to I'm actually writing it now as in prose, and I'm going to read it as a podcast. Okay, nice. If anyone tells you not, we just find find a way to do it. Find a way to do it. I mean, that's yeah. just um, so you know. You hear of pretty much anyone that's made a film, or anyone that's been making a film or wanting to make a film, you'll find that they've been told no yeah. a million times. You know what? You tell me no. I'm going to find a way to yeah, do yeah, this, no, and I ain't, I ain't stopping. <laughs> I'll show you. I'm going yeah. to show you. <laughs> I'll show you. I love this story. I love telling this. I really want to write this. So, yeah, I wish you all the best, Martin. And Thank you I know much. you. You ain't going to slow down. It's, <laughs> it's going to get done regardless. Uh, Martin, all the best, and I'll speak to you very soon. Yeah, Thank right. you. Bye -bye. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to look out for upcoming episodes of The Process. Yeah.